In June of 2015, Studio Wildcard's Ark Survival Evolved entered early access on Steam and quickly gathered a large following of players from both the survival game genre and from what was, at the time, a relatively small but starved dinosaur gaming community. With so many dinosaur-oriented games entering early access only to die in development hell or fall into mediocrity. Riding off the hype of the Jurassic World film, Ark Survival Evolved skyrocketed in popularity and as of 2025 is the fourth best-selling game of all time. Dinosaur enthusiasts have had no shortage of criticism for the paleo accuracy of the game's models, which range from slightly stylized to... What is that? What the f*** is that? Clearly, Wildcard isn't going for accuracy here. However, in this video, me and my friend Ark Ractor will go over a number of the models from Ark Survival Evolved and Ascended, and place them on a tier list based on how accurate they are to their real-life counterparts as it fits with our current understanding. Keep in mind, both me and Argractor have thousands of hours in ASA and ASC combined, so we're not hating on it in any way, this is just for fun. And of course, we'll only be covering species that actually do exist. So without any further ado, let's start off with what is likely the first dino every beach bob will meet, the dodo. Without any prior knowledge of the dodo or its appearance, ARC players will get a pretty decent idea of how this animal would have looked in real life, just with some tweaks that make it fit the aesthetic of the game. The feathers on the body, and especially the wing and tail feathers, are all much larger than they really would have been, with real dodo bird feathers being smaller and more numerous like that of a pigeon, which is their closest living relative. There's also these jagged angles that line the beak and a really strong brow ridge that makes the dodo bird look quite aggressive. There's going to be a pretty common theme of the dinos in-game being quite a bit larger than they were in real life. But for the dodo, the game devs got it pretty spot on. The true height and mass of the dodo is not known, but from written accounts and estimates based on composite skeletal remains, we can safely say the dodo was somewhere between 70 or 90 centimeters tall. That would be 2.5 to 3 feet. Visually, that's about as tall as your knee or your hip, depending on how tall you are. The dodo bird is often depicted as dull, dumb, and slow, and there's no exception to that in Ark. This mostly comes from accounts of sailors who first encountered them in the 16th century, who said that they had no fear of humans. Truth is, the dodo would have been fairly intelligent, perhaps just as much as their relative the pigeon. The lack of fear stems from evolving on an island in which they had no predators, and they were certainly not slow or dopey like they are in the game. They had long, robust legs that made them dynamic, fast runners, and competent climbers. With all that considered, we'll be putting the dodo bird in the Mastercraft tier, as despite the inaccuracies, it's fairly well representative for the real animal. Overall, Ark's parasaur largely resembles the Jurassic Park rendition of Parasaurolophus. With a more kangaroo-like stance that is very largely outdated, in reality Parasaurolophus would have had a much stockier build, more like that of other hadrosaurs, more column-like limbs to support their massive weight. The Stanosaurus crest was a hollow, keratinous structure that would have allowed it to communicate with other members of its species over a wide range. In Ark, its crest is made much slimmer, with odd spiked protrusions flaring out on either side, and ends in a point that would have seriously dampened its acoustics. We also see that the neural spines that run along its back are connected with a very thin membrane, similar to what's seen on the Metrodon or many fish. In reality, these spines would have likely been connected with a substantial amount of flesh rather than a thin membrane. The Parasaur wouldn't exactly be considered large among the other dinos. However, at 4 meters in height, the Parasaur is as tall or taller than the largest real-life estimates. In-game, the Parasaur walks around on its hind legs in perpetuity, but Parasaurolophus would have spent much more time walking around on all fours, only standing on its hind legs to reach for taller plants, look around, or kick it into high gear when running. The Parasaur can be found alone, in pairs, or in small groups, though this is more often just a result of multiple paras spawning in one area rather than any coded flocking behavior, as groups of Parasaurs will not react to one Parasaur being attacked. This is a far cry from the real-life Parasaurolophus, which would have lived in very large herds, and definitely would have used their crest to communicate danger if a predator attacked them. The Parasaur's crest functionality only comes into play when the dino is tamed, with the ability to detect hostile creatures nearby and to communicate this to players within its tribe. The Parasaur takes a lot of creative liberties with its anatomy and is lacking when it comes to its behavior that represents the real animal, putting it in the ramshackle tier. 
while just about anyone knows anything about dinosaurs would recognize Ark Strike as a Triceratops, there's a big difference between them. The most obvious one being the shimmer of spikes this guy has. The Triceratops name means three horned face, but the trike has a total of 26 horns, which makes it a Hexicosaceratops. I don't need to say much else for you guys to know that's not exactly accurate. Then there's the trike overall posture. Triceratops had a very odd body shape, hips that rose above its neck, to counterbalance its huge head instead of an extra long tail like most dinosaurs. The trike gets almost none of this right. In fact, its body sort of just resembles that of a stout sauropod rather than a ceratopsian. Surprisingly, the trike is nearly the same size as Triceratops, both around 9 meters long, with only proportions making any difference in dimensions. So kudos for that one. Trikes can usually be found alone, in pairs or in small groups, and will charge at any player or creature that attacks another trike, regardless of the creature's size. In fact, trikes will actually get a damage and resistance buff when in the presence of hostile dinos that outweigh them. For Triceratops specifically, we don't have a whole lot of evidence that they moved in big, big herds like we do for a number of its relatives, but we do have some evidence for smaller groups, which Ark actually gets right here. And absolutely, Triceratops would have likely been very aggressive and defensive for themselves and each other, on account of their face being a literal siege engine. The trike's overall anatomy leaves something to be desired with way too many horns and incorrect posture and proportions. But its size and in-game behavior is fairly accurate, we'll be placing this one in Ramshackle tier. I can either say a lot about this model, or I can say a little and just let you guys work it out. The Arc Rex looks like every Hot Wheels T-Rex ever. The head is incredibly misshapen and absolutely massive. The arms have that same limp, bent, pronated posture that all the Jurassic Park dinosaurs had. I won't hate on it too much. It's a little bit better than the original T-Rex model that Arc started with, and I'm assuming that the reason they didn't do a complete overhaul is because they didn't want to make a whole new rig, and the Rex was sort of the poster boy for Arc and its marketing by that point. And you know what? I'm fine with that. I like the Hot Wheels T-Rex. The Rex in Ark is a whopping 24 meters long, twice the size of the real T-Rex. This dino is a prime example of the disparaging sizes between the game and real life, and it's especially nerve-wracking to put the Rex next to the trike, who in the Mesozoic were much closer in size to each other than they are depicted here. As far as behavior goes, it storms, it roars, it attacks, anything that moves, the only exception being Rexes. Certainly not accurate to real life, but it is a video game, and if any dino is going to behave that way, got to be the Tyrant Lizard King. As iconic as the T-Rex is, we have no choice but to put it in the Needs Repair tier. Something that Ark gets right here that a lot of other IPs mess up is the number of big toes that this dinosaur had. Rather than the usual three toes and a dew claw or a backwards facing toe, Therizinosaurus had four large toes all facing forward. Meaning, believe it or not, the Ark model is more accurate than the one from Jurassic World for once. While we don't have direct evidence of Therizinosaurus having feathers, its closer relatives have been found with feathers. So it's by no means a stretch to give it the feathering arrangement that it has. The only other issue I really see with the model is the shape of the head with it being a little too wide. Now the Ark Theri is a fair bit larger than the real life Therizinosaurus, but it's not by much, roughly the same length at 9 meters long, but about a meter taller. The Theri is by far the most aggressive herbivore on the island, attacking players in the early game with the same persistence as carnivores, by virtue of having such large laws, Therizino would have been very capable of defending itself, though evidence suggests these claws weren't sturdy enough to be used as weapons on a regular basis. They were there as an option when it got down to it. They were more useful for stripping branches of their leaves, which is something we see reflected in the Theri's ability to collect edge and large amounts of fiber. Like other early to mid-game herbivores, the Therizinosaurus is surprisingly accurate to its real-life counterpart, but there are just a few anatomical differences that throw it off just a tad bit. For that reason, we'll be placing it in Journeyman tier. The Pheomia is, in our opinion, the most accurate depiction of any extinct species represented in the game, with really the only mentionable difference between the two being that the Ark's Pheomia face is a little bit shorter, and there's a larger hump on its back. As far as size goes, depending on which species you compare it to, it is either the same size or a bit smaller than the real elephant. 
In terms of its behavior, there's not much to be said. It's an unremarkable, free-roaming herbivore. When tamed, its only real use lies in keeping it locked up next to some dung beetles to automate fertilizer production. I wish it was a little bit more useful, because personally, I really like the Fiomia model. For those reasons, we will be placing Fiomia in the Mastercraft tier. The Carno is another dino that, when it comes to its anatomy, doesn't go too far with the archifying. It pretty much looks like a real Carnotaurus that's been hitting the gym, with an overall more bulky and robust build than the streamlined, agile build it has in the Mesozoic. Its horns, which are really more like brow crests than true horns, are larger and a bit more pointed, and even its notoriously tiny arms are made a fair bit bigger. Arx Carno is nowhere near the size of its real counterpart. In fact, it is roughly the same size as the real Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is kinda crazy. In-game, the Carno is among the fastest theropods in the game, which is true to what paleontologists say about the dinosaur, with high estimates claiming it could reach more than 50 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour. The Carno can also do a charge attack where it attacks with its horns. The horns on this animal in real life were more like raw Chris rather than true horns and would have not been able to use them as weapons on a regular basis. But we can definitely see why they did it. For these reasons, we'll be placing this dino on journeyman tier. The stego is a fairly decent representation of the real animal with a few nitpicks. The stego's neck seems to swoop down below the shoulders and has a very rounded back with a substantially longer tail. Stegosaurus did have hips that rose above its head, sort of like the Triceratops, but in a much more box-like shape. The neck would have been a bit shorter and at least rose above the shoulders. The tail would also be much shorter with four thagomizers rather than six. The real stego was only 9 meters long and 4 meters tall, or around the same size as the game's trike. It's odd because the difference in size between the game stego and its rex is pretty close to the size difference between the real rex and triceratops. I couldn't tell you why they chose to do this. Moreover, the stego has the ability to change the position of its plates in order to receive different buffs towards things like defense, damage, and item harvesting. Of course, the stego did not have the ability to move the plates like this. But hey, it's a video game. It needs some type of gimmick. Stego is overall definitely recognizable as a Stegosaurus, but like the trike it gets a few things wrong when it comes to its overall anatomy and is almost sauropod sized. For those reasons we'll be placing it in Ramshackle tier. The Megalodon for many players is the first threat they faced in the water, and a terrifying one at that. At the time of release, Arx Megalodon didn't really get anything wrong. A lot of paleo art and studies at the time had the Meg more or less depicted as a bigger and chunkier great white. More recent studies suggest that the Megalodon would have had a more elongated body, though that is still a subject of debate for some paleontologists. But if it is the case, the Arx Megalodon still wouldn't be too far off, and really just needs to be stretched out a little. Surprisingly, Arx Megalodon is pretty much the same size as the actual Megalodon, at least at the time the model was made. Another example of a creature that stays mostly the same in dimensions to show how truly massive they made the other dinos. We will be placing the Megalodon in the Mastercraft tier. So, the Quetzal's model isn't terrible. The neck is a little too short, the beak is a little too wide, and the crest is pretty extravagant. But the posture, <laughs> the posture is just... Yeah, no pterosaur would have held a posture quite like this. Now, I am aware that the Quetzal was initially meant to have more accurate upright posture like we see in the dossier, only hunching over to make use of the platform saddle. In that wild card at the time, couldn't figure out how to get the animations working for it for whatever reason. In fact, those same animations can still be found in the game's dev kit. I'm hoping this is something they'll get around to fixing with the Extra Life TLC on the way. In Ark, the Quetz is roughly three times the size of the real pterosaur, with a wingspan of 30 meters compared to the real one's 10 or 11 meter wingspan. With other flyers like Tapajara and Argentavis being as large as they are, of course Wildcard needed to up the ante on what was supposed to be the Sky Bronto. Featuring a platform saddle, players can build a mini base, armored shells or mobile weapons platform on their back. Of course the real life Quetzalcoatlus was already so large that it wouldn't be able to spend as much time flying as other pterosaurs. Never mind, pick up a mammoth with a house on its back. I don't think much else needs to be said here. The Quetzal, at least prior to its upcoming TLC, will be placed in the Needs Repair tier. And here's the big 
bad dino you've all been waiting for. Arguably more iconic than the Rex, Arx Giga is one of the most recognizable video game creatures of all time. But how well does it represent the real life counterpart? Well, it doesn't, really. The arms, the brow horns, the posture, even the shape of the tail are nothing like the real animal. You could make an argument that yes, the arms on Giganotosaurus were slightly larger than they were on other theropods, but certainly not to this degree. A little disappointing to see the arms get this long and still not able to use them for an attack in game. But I think Wildcard did all this on purpose. Why? Well, remember, Ark released and became popular around the same time Jurassic World its sequel came out, and making a dinosaur that looked like the Indominus Rex without copying it directly was a pretty smart move at the time. If you've played Ark at all, or even seen my episode of Assessing Survival on the Dino, you'll know that the Ark Giga is truly ridiculous in its proportions. Wildcard needed a bigger and badder carnivore than the Rex and the Spino, so they went balls to the wall with this guy. And I distinctly remember there being a lot of hype around the Giganotosaurus being larger than T-Rex around the same time they added the dinosaur to the game in Ark. Of course, now we know that while Giga was indeed longer and perhaps a tad bit taller than T-Rex, it was easily outmasked by the Tyrant Lizard King, which is why I appreciate my friend Shadlos' Critter Reworks mod, which drops the Giga down in size significantly while retaining its top dog status. The Giga is, of course, a hulking, berserker, murder machine that is one of the hardest dinosaurs to tame or fight in the game. Once tamed, the Giga is one of few creatures on the island that is capable of destroying stone structures. Of course, there's no way its real-life counterpart would have been capable of doing such a thing. One thing that is fairly accurate, though, is the bleed effect that this dino inflicts, as the real animal was believed to have hunted larger prey like titanosaurs by inflicting large wounds with its sharp teeth for their prey to bleed out from, rather than with brute force like the T-Rex. So, while I do really personally love the Giga, just for nostalgia's sake, I suppose, this one is definitely going in the needs repair tier. And repair it will get, with the Extra Life TLC coming up, chances are it will reach the required milestone not too long after this video comes out. Which I'm certainly happy about, but a little sad to see it go. If you like this list and want to see more dinos compared to their real life counterparts, check out my friend Ark Ractor's upcoming video where we add another 10 dinos onto this same tier list. Thank you once again for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one. Get your fucking Reaper out of the way. What is that fucking thing? That <laughs> my gross. Seeker! Well, leave my Seeker it alone, looks man. Leave it's my Seeker disgusting. The most disgusting, vile creature I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and I'm getting rid of him, okay? Ew. Ew. Okay, there there we go. Okay. He's gone. There we go.